Now we move on to game number four. The Reds have a three games to none lead. They need one win tonight to end the series here in Oakland. Nobody ever dreamed that this series would go four games. And if they did, they figured the Oakland A's would sweep the Reds in four. And obviously that's not the way it turned out. This was a great ball game, accentuated by tremendous pitching. Jose Rijo for the Reds and Dave Stewart for the Oakland Athletics. That was a game in which uh, Stewart hit Billy Hatcher with a pitch in the first inning. Hatcher having uh, was on his way to setting a World Series record, uh, had already done that for the number of consecutive hits, and he was drilled by a Stewart fastball in the first inning and had to leave the game. Eric Davis suffered the terrible kidney injury in making a diving catch early in the game, and on top of all that, the Reds were behind one nothing early. And because of the pitching of Stewart, it stayed that way until the eighth inning when the Reds finally were able to mount some type of offense. Oakland, meanwhile, had collected only two hits all night long. Rio settled down after giving up the run early and retired in the eight and the third innings in which he pitched in that game. He retired 21 of the last 22 batters he faced. But then in the eighth, Glenn Braggs had a ground out that got the tying run in, and then Hal Morris delivered a sacrifice fly to score Herm Winningham, who became a hero in that game. He was forced off the bench to play, ended up getting a couple of hits and three times up, and scored what turned out to be the winning run. Rio worked eight and a third, and then Sweet Lou turned it over to Randy Myers for the final two outs. The final out, of course, was when he induced Carney Lansford to foul out to Todd Benzinger uh, in foul territory at first base for the 27th and final out. The Reds had come up with something that nobody ever dreamed about, and that was winning this World Series four games to none. It was a series that was accentuated by incredible relief work by the Reds. We all know the names of Norm Charlton and, and Randy Myers uh, and uh, Rob Dibble, but throw in people like Jack Armstrong, who worked out of the bullpen, and also right-hander Scott Scudder. Uh, 13 and a third innings of shutout baseball delivered by the Reds bullpen in that World Series. And then when they had the big celebration, uh, when Tony Perez and I went to Carl's Jr. across the street from the hotel to buy hamburgers and french fries for everybody before the next day jumping on the plane, flying back to Cincinnati for the big celebration down on Fountain Square, we could all look back on those four games and think about that right there, the 1990 World Series indeed belong to the Cincinnati Reds.